Hello, my name's Wendy and I'm from Children's Discovery in Sydney. And this is the Little Bang Discovery Club, a program especially for young children, preschoolers aged three to five years, or children who have just started primary school up to about year two. And you should all have an adult with you as your co-learner. Now, the Little Bang Discovery Club is all about how science works. And in this situation, you're gonna be working as a team with the, ch the child and the grown-up together, but the child is the junior discoverer and the grown-up is their lab assistant. So we want the children to be doing the thinking and the adults are there to help them if they need help with something. Now, it's okay for your child to be playing during this session. So if they seem to be perhaps a bit off task and doing something that doesn't seem to be quite what they've been asked, that's fine because children learn through play. So ask them what they're doing, ask them what they're thinking, and you'll be amazed what they will tell you, what their, where their imaginations take them. So it's quite okay for your child to be playing and seeming to be not doing how you do it because they're doing things their way and we want to encourage that during this program. Now there are four sessions to the Little Bang Discovery Club and it's probably a good idea for you to pause the recording and do the activities and then come back to it. So I'm going to be showing you some things. You'll probably want to pause and do them and then come back to see what's coming up next. Now the first session today is all about how to be a good discoverer and one of the things that scientists like to do is to collect and classify things or sort things. So I'm going to ask the children some questions and I'd like you to talk to your grown-up about these things. Now children, who likes to look at the stars and the moon? So tell your grown-up if, you, if you've seen the stars and if you've seen the moon up in the sky. And now have you ever noticed that the moon can be out during the day? And have you ever wondered why that happens? That's the sort of thing that scientists do. They see something and they wonder why. What about looking at the stars? Children, tell your grown-up if you've looked at the stars and have you ever seen them twinkle? Do you know the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? You might like to sing it together right now. Have you ever seen the stars twinkle? Have you ever wondered why they twinkle? That's the sort of thing that scientists do, see something and wonder why. And now, uh, who likes to go to the park to play? Now, we can't actually do that at the moment, but think back to the last time you went to the park and do you have a favorite piece of equipment that you'd like to go on and on and on over and over again? And your, your grown-ups can't get you to get off the slide because you just want to keep sliding, for example. So that's what scientists like to do too. They like to do things over and over again. So, and here's a question for the grown-ups. Are your children always asking you, why? But why? That's what scientists do as well. They ask lots of questions. So you can see that the children are already really good at science. They like to look at things. They like to do things over and over again. And they like to ask questions. And they're all things that scientists do. Now, what we're going to do first up is have a go at something that scientists likes, like to do, and that is they like to sort things, or the special word that they use for that is to classify things. Now, I want you to look around the space that you're in at the moment. Now, it might be inside, it might be in an outdoor space, wherever you happen to be, and look around, are there things sorted in special places? So if you have noticed behind me, we've got lots of things here that are sorted into containers. Have you got things like that in your space? Are they sorted into a special place? So tell your grown up now, talk to them about what is in the space you're in that's been sorted and put away in a special place. Now, for example, if I was wanting to use a pair of scissors right now, I know that I could go to the stationary hub on the table over there and they'd be waiting for me. Is there something in the space that you're in that you know that if you wanted it, you could go and find it very easily? So that's one of the things that scientists like to do. Now we're going to do some actual examples of sorting. And the first thing we're going to try and sort are some socks. 
So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to go and get some socks and try this activity. So first of all, you've probably got a spot where your socks live. So are they in a, in a cupboard, on a shelf or in a drawer? Probably all kept together and they might all be nicely folded up in their pairs like these ones are. Now my favourite pair of socks from this pile would be these ones with the love hearts on them. So that would be my favourite pair of socks. And if I was not wearing socks already today and I was ready to go out and I needed to go and get my socks, I'd go to my special spot where they're kept, which at my house is in a drawer. I'd open up the drawer, have a look inside. Ah, here's my favourite pair of socks I'd like to wear today. And I'd put them on. And that took me no time at all to do. Now, scientists also like to sort things to make them easy to find. But if your socks weren't in their pairs, folded in their pairs, but were all separate, do you think they'd stay in their spot next to their pair? Would they all stay nicely arranged in their pairs like this? Or do you think they'd get all messed up? Talk to your grown-up, what do you think would happen? Would they stay nicely in their drawer or the shelf just like this? Or do you think they'd get all mixed up? What do you think might happen? I think this is what might happen. You might have a different idea though. It could work the other way. Now, if I'm trying to find my favourite pair of socks, this time I go to my drawer and everything's in a mess. And, oh, here's one of them. What is the other one? Ah, found it. Okay, now I can put on my socks and off I go. See how much longer that took me? Now, can you imagine if, as well as having your socks all mixed up in one spot, you had your hats and you had your t-shirts. How long do you think it would take you to find your favorite pair of socks now? Hmm. Oh, here's one. Oh, these hats are in the way. Ah, here, I've got it now. So you can see that by sorting things and with your socks, keeping them in their pairs folded up without all this other stuff in the way, it's much quicker and easier to find what you're looking for. And it's the same for scientists. They like to sort or classify things because it makes them easy to find and it helps them explain what's going on and it helps us to understand. So whenever you're doing sorting, you're being a scientist. Now, what I'd like you to do now is to find a collection of toys. So I've got a bit of a collection of toys here. Now, when you've got your collection of toys, you could leave them all in a pile like this and say, this is my pile of toys and I'm just going to leave them like that in a pile. But you might decide when you look through them that some toys seem to go together and some toys sort of are different and, and don't belong in that group. So what I'd like you to do is to sort your toys out now you can leave them all in one pile if you like, or you can start sorting them out. But the children need to decide why and how they're going to sort them. So the grown-ups are there to help, but the grown-ups aren't telling the children what to do. Put that one over there, put that one over there. No, that's for the children to decide. And the grown-ups need to ask their children what they're thinking. Why have you done it that way? So. We're going to give you a little bit of time, probably a good idea now to pause the recording and do your sorting. I'm going to do some sorting while you do, and then we'll come back and see how I've sorted it, see if it's the same as what you had. But I would imagine that there'll be lots of different ideas because there's lots of different ways to do this. Okay, now here are my toys that I've sorted a certain way. Can you tell what I've done? And perhaps you've had a similar idea. This time I've sorted my toys according to their colour. So we've got the mostly red toys over here, 
the mostly yellow toys over here, the orange toys here, the green toys here, the blue toys here, and I've got a white toy, and then I've got a ball that's got a bit of white and a bit of yellow, so it's sort of in the middle there. So did you sort your toys according to their colour? Now there are lots of other ways to do it. So after you've sp spoken to your grown up about how you actually sorted your toys and what you did, we're going to jumble them all up again and try and think of a different way to sort them. So have a chat to your grown up, tell them what you were thinking while you were sorting if you haven't done that yet, and then See if you can come up with a new idea about how to sort your toys. So this time I've sorted my toys into the type of toy. So we've got the cars and a train here together, so vehicles here. We've got our animals all together here. We've got our blocks here and the ball is rolling around deciding it wants to join the blocks. So this is a second way that you can sort things and there's probably lots of other ideas that you've come up with as well. So talk to your grown-up now about the second way that you've been sorting things. Now you probably think that scientists need lots of equipment to do their experiments. They usually do need some equipment, but you've probably already got a fair bit of it at home to use and I'm going to show you what you need to collect for us to use for the rest of the program. So we're going to go on a bit of a treasure hunt. So I'm going to show you all these things and you can pause the recording whenever you like to go off and see if you can find those things. And we're going to make a collection of items for you to use. So the first thing that you'll need will be a box to put it all in. So perhaps something like this, or maybe you've got a shoe box you can put it all in. Or maybe you've got a green bag you might use, or a bigger box. So first of all, you need to find something to keep your collection of items in. So I'm going to hang on to that one for now. Now, some of the other things you need to try and find. Um, have you got a pencil? Because scientists like to write things down. And something to write on, so a little notepad or some paper. Pop them in your box. Have you got a ruler? Or you might have a tape measure, something that looks a bit like this, or a tape measure like these. So if, you've, if you can find a tape measure, that would be a good thing. I'll just put one of them in. Now, have you got some string? You'll need about four metres of string. So if you've got some string, pop that in. Have you got some big rubber bands? See if you can find a couple of big rubber bands. Put in your box. Have you got some plastic cups? So this sort of cup, or you might have this sort of cup. So a couple of cups to put in your box. Have you got a chopstick? Or if you don't have a chopstick, have you got a big spoon that you can use? So one of those, pop them in. Have you got a takeaway container? Or you might have something like a lunchbox that you could put in. Do you have any magnets? Now, if you go to your fridge, you might find magnets. You might have a magnet that looks like a magnet. Or you might have magnets hiding on the back of these magnets that stick to your fridge. So see if you can find a magnet that might be stuck to your fridge and pop that in. Now, have you got a coat hanger? Either a child's coat hanger like this or an adult's coat hanger, a metal coat hanger. Either of those, you'll need, you'll need a metal coat hanger at some point in the program. Uh, if you've got a child's coat hanger, you can use that one for a different time as well. So have you got coat hangers? And have you got a timer of some sort? Now, this is a timer, but you might not have a timer like this. But somebody might have a phone that's got a timer on it. Or you might have a clock 
that's got a second hand that goes round that you can use as a timer. So they're the things that you're trying to put together into a box to use over the rest of the program. And this is going to be called our discovery box. Now, there are a few things you're going to need as well to, do, to run some experiments later on in the program. So let me show you what they are. Do you have any blue tack or plasticine? So these things, if you haven't got them already, you can probably pick them up from the supermarket. So pop them onto the shopping list when you are going to go shopping. So some blue tack or some plasticine. Um, have you got either some eggs? So we're going to be using some eggs. Uh, now, if you're allergic to eggs, that we're not going to be breaking them or anything. They're going to stay in their shells. But if you're still allergic to eggs, you can use for one of our experiments. Instead, you can use some grapes. So these things you won't need for the next session, but for the one after that. Uh, have you got a couple of balloons? Uh, and you'll also need a glass. I think everyone's probably got one of those. You'll need a couple more cups, whether they're this type or whether they're just cups from the kitchen. Uh, you'll need a bowl. Um, if you haven't already put a spoon into your discovery box, you'll need a spoon. And you'll need about a quarter of a cup of salt. And you'll need a picture from a magazine or a newspaper. So this is the extent of what you will need to do some experiments in session three and four. So if you haven't got any of these things, pop them on the shopping list. And when someone's going to the supermarket, they can pick them up from there. Now, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to leave you with something to do before the next session. And that is to make a collection of your own. So that's what this takeaway box or lunch box is for, to put your collection in if it fits nicely. Now, if it doesn't fit nicely in that box, then obviously you'll use something else. Now, I've got a suggestion here for you, one that I've already made, and that is a collection of leaves. So I found these leaves in my garden or when I went for a walk up the street. So there are some different types of leaves in here. I've even got one that's colored red, which is unusual. So a variety of different leaves, and that's a, a collection you might like to make. Now, grown-ups, let the children think about the collection that they'd like to make. Uh, they need to talk to you about it to see if it's a safe thing to collect, and they should only be collecting things when you're there to make sure they only pick up things that are safe. And if they want to collect something that belongs to somebody else, they need to ask them if that's all right. So try and make a collection for next week. Children, think about what is it you'd like to collect. It might be something you already have that you've already collected before that you want to prepare for next session, or it might be something new. So that's what we're trying to do before next session, make a little collection of something. It can be leaves if you want to do leaves, but if you let the children think about it, they can come up with some very imaginative things to collect. And then just one more thing. We've written a book to go with this program called The Little Bang Book of Discovery. Uh, it's uh, just a little booklet with lots of ideas about what we're discussing, talking about during this program and lots more ideas for experiments that you can do at home. If you would like a copy of this book, it costs $15 plus $2 postage, and you can email us info at childrensdiscovery.org.au and we'll organise to get a copy to you. <music>